Oh, I mean, hi everyone. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good? You guys like that praise and worship? It's awesome. Give him another round of applause for praise and worship. You know, if you guys want to be on the worship team, let us know because we need helping hands. Amen, praise and worship team. We need, we need help. <laughs> so yeah. Or if you guys want to be like part of any part of the leadership, let us know. We need we need you. All right. Um, we're just gonna get right into it. Let me just get this thing started. You know what? I'm so sad, you guys, because if you notice, we don't have a PowerPoint. But I actually made a PowerPoint for once. Like, and I can't use it. So you guys can't see my awesome work. It's in my um, what is that thing called? USB thing? Yeah, that's what it's called. Okay, what's in there? I'm really sad because I worked hard. <laughs> it's okay. Anyways, um, so we are nearing the end of this series, and I think we have about like three more messages left. Two. Two. Two more. Two more messages left, you guys. So we, what's thirteen minus two? Eleven. So we are on the eleventh reason why, right? Right. Right. Okay. So we're on eleven. Can you guys believe it? Okay. So we are like nearing the end of the year, and how many of you guys like actually met your New Year's goals that you had set for yourself last year? You met it. What was it? Not make another one. That's good. I should do that next year. What's yours? I met it. Good. You know that's that's really good advice. But did you have a good year overall? No. And good. Okay, um, I personally, I, I don't even remember what I said my goal to be, but I probably didn't meet it. But I had a really good year, to be honest. Um, probably one of the best years of my life so far. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was, it was good. So yeah, um, so since we are nearing the end of the year, we want to kind of, this is kind of a time like when we near, can you guys believe Thanksgiving is next week? That's crazy. Oh my gosh, it's literally next week. Cool. But yeah, um... I moved this to the side so I didn't hide behind it, but now I'm hiding behind it. So um, so this is just a time where we like kind of recap our lives, we kind of reflect, and we kind of think about, okay, where am I at in life and all that stuff. And so I'm going to start tonight with like a really heavy question that all of us have hopefully asked or like probably asked, um, but how many of you guys know what you want to do with the rest of your life? I, I, I was expecting that laugh. I was hoping for that. You know. Awesome. What do you want to do for the rest of your life? Not make goals. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Sleep. Sleep for, oh, that would be awesome. Um, I would be I'm pro at that. What I'm hoping to do for <laughs> high school is, um, like, I'm going to do babysitting, and then if I have time, I'm going to go to school. Awesome. So yeah, I, I wish I had you as a friend when I was a kid. <laughs> I want my career to involve animals. Nice. Oh. Awesome. Okay, I, I personally didn't have like a plan growing up. Um, what I wanted to do, we, I remember in third grade we were asked to do this project of like what we wanted to be when we grew up. I don't know where this came from, but I made a whole project about how I wanted to be a cheerleader. I don't know why I can't dance. Like I, I can't do any of that acrobatic stuff, but I mean, that's what we did. And so um, as, as I got older, the, my goals kind of got more practical. Like I wanted to be a hairstylist. Um, I cut my own mullet. I will not, I don't have any more pictures to show you guys, I would have, but I deleted it because I was so ashamed of it. And so that, that was out of the water. And so I was like, older than I wanted to be a pharmacist. And so um, I tried that. My friend told me to try tech school first to see if you like it. And that was like the best advice of my life because I figured out that's not what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so now I'm here at 23 year old, years old asking myself the same question. So you guys have hope, all right? Um, if you guys don't know what you want to do yet. But um, if you kind of, look at your lives we start really young and like kind of grow up and it's like this never-ending worry about what's going to happen tomorrow right and so like if you think you're like in elementary school like you worry about your oh who's going to be my friend or is mom or dad going to pick me up from school today um or, and then you get older and then you're like oh um i have to worry about my grades and then when you hit high school you're like okay what college am i going to go to and then after college, you're like, okay, what job am I going to get? After you go to college, you have to go like, oh my gosh, who am I going to marry? Are we going to have kids? Then you have to worry about retirement and all that stuff. And so the message is very short today. Basically, the message is that we all basically worry for the rest of our lives and then we die. Let's close in prayer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
I'm just kidding. I know. I'm totally kidding, but it's fine. But you know what's really sad, you guys, is that this type of thinking might be true for some people, and that's the really sad part. I think we all have that friend that's kind of like super morbid. Um, I think I might be that friend. If you ask my friends, I have like four. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah. Um, so tonight, for the next half hour, we're going to try to figure out this question of like, how in the midst of all this worry, in the midst of all this expectation, all this pressure of like what we're gonna do for the rest of our lives, all the turmoil, like all the fear, all the uncertainties, like where in the midst of all of that are we, like what keeps us going? And why do we keep doing what we're doing? Why do we put so much energy into what we do and, and our, into our goals and what, um, why do we choose not to give up? And so I'm gonna just open up in prayer before we start, so if y'all can value hits. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to thank you for today, Lord. We want to thank you um, because you're so good and you're so kind, Lord God, and you are so awesome and um, you're, you're just so merciful, God, and you are great. And we just want to thank you and thank you for giving me this opportunity to just speak your word, Lord God. Um, whew, slow down my words because I talk too fast. <laughs> and I just pray that you just um, bless me with the Holy Spirit as I just deliver your word, Lord God. Let my words fall to the floor and may yours be glorified, Lord. Um, and I just pray that you just um, allow this message to just pierce through all of our hearts. Lord God, and we, we just um, apply it to our lives, Lord, and we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. So if you guys have your Bibles or your digital Bibles, um, you can take those out. And so tonight we are going to be studying from the book of Hebrews. Wasn't there like a coffee joke about that? I don't know it. I, I forgot what it is. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to butcher it. Um, <laughs> but before we go to the main verse, I want to kind of give you a background of what this book was all about. Um, so the book of Hebrews, some say that it was Paul that wrote it. The author's not named, but um, they think that it's Paul. I personally don't think it's Paul because if you read Romans and all that, those other books, it doesn't, the, the writing doesn't match. So I don't think it's him. Um, but if you think it's him, that's cool. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the book of Hebrews is written as a letter of encouragement to new Christians and to new believers. Okay, so these believers, they were once Jewish, and so after Jesus came, they believed that he was the Messiah and all that stuff. Um, and so what had happened um, was prior to Jesus' coming for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, that they were expecting this Messiah and this Savior to come to save them from like all their sin, to save them from all this stuff, and just to give them a new hope basically. And so they were waiting for hundreds of years, and so they heard all these prophecies about him, and they were expecting him to come. And what was funny is that they were, they were expecting this, like, high and mighty king to just basically come out of the heavens and, like, come down in chariots with all of his horses and galore, and, like, they thought that this big, huge thing was going to happen. He was just going to, like, wipe out all of the evil in the world. And so what's funny is that they got, like, the exact opposite of that, um, they basically got a baby in a really stinky manger um, born from like a 14 year old virgin. And so they were just like, oh, this is supposed to be our king. So that's kind of hard to believe, right? And so um, no one really believed it as for, at first, but then he kind of, he grew up and he started like doing these miracles and he started healing people and he started forgiving people of their sins. And like the best part was that like he got crucified because a lot of people hated him, but he rose again from the dead. And that was like the biggest like icing on the cake. So people are like, whoa, he is the Messiah. And so these are the, these Jewish people are like, okay, I choose to believe that this is the Messiah. This is my savior. This is, this guy fulfills all the prophecies that we were reading about. And so this is, this is the guy I choose to believe in him. And so these Hebrew or the, the Jews, these Hebrew um, people, they were like, okay, professing that this is, Jesus is Lord. And so immediately like their lives changed after that. Um, relationally, socially, and this changed because, like, for those people that didn't believe in Jesus, this made a lot of people, like, really mad, okay? Like, for example, like, how many of you, like, actually like pineapple pizza, like, Hawaiian pizza? Yeah. Raise your hand. <laughs> I, I honestly, I hate pineapple pizza. I, yeah, it's, I think the Hawaiians ruined pizza. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Amen. Right? <laughs> Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. I think that's where I got it from. But yeah, I, I just think I don't like Hawaiian pizza. Um, I think it's terrible. And the fact that I think it's terrible, people think that I'm terrible, right? So we don't, we don't agree on some things. So what if, um, and even that, what if I said I hate dogs? Yeah. Whoa. See, people, like, everyone, like, what the heck? Like, how can you hate dogs? 
all that stuff. And that's, so all of these like different type of beliefs, people are like disagreeing and they, they don't like people. So when it came to Jesus, people were like, you believe in Jesus? Okay, I don't like you. Okay, so, so think about um, this kind of day. So like people were getting persecuted for following Jesus. Yeah, people were dying for following, following Jesus. They were getting cut off from their families. They probably got fired from their jobs. Um, they were dying and then um, all that stuff. And so if you can imagine just being a Christian in this day, like this might like seem a little graphic, but imagine like your best, seeing your best friend die. Imagine seeing your family get tortured. Um, your job cuts you off. Like your brothers and sisters don't want to talk to you anymore because you follow this guy. And so this is just a very low point in a lot of these new Christians' lives, right? And they started kind of getting homesick from their old Jewish ways. So they were like saying, you know, it was a lot easier when I didn't follow Jesus. Like things were a lot better. Um, they weren't, or they weren't necessarily better, but it was easier. And I feel like I can't do this anymore. It's a lot harder than I thought. And so this is too much pressure. I don't want to do it anymore. Like so, um, I'm, I'm this close to giving up on Jesus. I don't want to do this anymore. Okay. And so um, they were kind of just like, so what's what's the point? Like, um, but if you see today, there are still so many Christians out there, and so. Um, and there's people that are still from, like, and it's still carried on today. And so, what, what is it that they held on to? What, what was the hope that kept them going? Um, what, like, even, like, this is, like, probably the worst and most tragic thing, and, but what kept them going to keep doing what they were doing? Um, have you guys ever tried dieting? I know some of you are, like, super young. How many of you guys, like, tried going on a diet? No. <laughs> All right, cool. I know. <laughs> it's hard, right? Like, diets are super hard. I tried that when I was five, and I only lasted two days. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I remember one time I tried going vegetarian, and it lasted, like, a day. Like, <laughs> Who does that? No, I, I know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we'll pray for you. <laughs> okay. I know. All right, so um, I remember, oh, well, I had to start, like, this diet, like, a few years ago. I haven't been consistent in it, which, it, and it's not because I'm trying to lose weight or anything, because I know I'm, like, a stick. Um, but it's just, like, for sake of my skin and my health, like, I had to go on a gluten-free diet. So I had to cut off, like, bread, like, uh -huh. wheat, anything that had, like, some sort of oat in it. I had to cut that off. So, like, no more pizza, no more pasta, no more anything with bread, no more sandwiches, no more pancakes. I can have rice. Yeah, no, waffle, I, I had to go off all the good stuff. And it was, it was so hard, you guys, like, oh my gosh. Like, all of a sudden, my friends wanted to go to, like, an all-carb restaurant. All of a sudden, like, things look so good. Like, people want to be cooking, making cookies, and I can't have them. And so, like, all this temptation, and it was so hard, but, like, what is the reason I held on? Like, what, what is the reason why I kept doing it? And, like, oh, no, it wasn't because of that, no. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so just... Just like me and just like with the new Christians, like in the midst of all of this like temptation, all of like the hard -er times, like what kept us going and why did we hold on to, to doing what we were doing? And um, if I had a PowerPoint, I would have shot up a big word that said hope. But yeah, hope is the reason why we do what we do. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so hope is the reason why we hold on. Hope is the reason why we continue doing what we do because we have hope that something good is going to happen out of it, right? Um, so the definition of hope, I had it on my PowerPoint, I don't have it on my notes, I don't know why, but it's just the expectation for something good to happen. So that's what we do. So even though we go through all of this stuff, even though we have so much pressure on our side, like even though like we have so much um, just like anxieties and worry, we hope that something good is going to come out of all of this. So if you guys have your Bibles, please turn to Hebrews 6.19. Hebrews 6. 19. Hebrews 6. And if you're there, say amen. amen. 619. Okay, I'm going to read that. And I'm just going to read the first part for now. And it says, so um, this is the ESV ver version. Um, and this is, so 619. So we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor for the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. So it says, and then I think this is NIV, but it says, like, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. So when you look at the, the word soul, um, we kind of think that it means, like, that, that spirit entity within us, like, that, that like, vapor-looking thing, like, that, that kind of, 
I don't know, if we think soul, we think of like spirit, right? Um, but like in Hebrew, it actually means like everything that is within us. So it's like, it's, it's everything that entitles you, like your body, your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, your, your fears, your anxieties, all that stuff. So everything that is within you. So when we look at this verse, we kind of say like, we need an, we have this hope that is an anchor for everything that is within us, that is firm and secure. All right. Um, and if you notice, we're kind of human, so our souls tend to like change a lot. So every our emotions change, our bodies change over time, um, our thoughts change, and like so when we have all of these like changes happening in us, what is that anchor that keeps us grounded into like who we truly are? That's what we're gonna look into that. Um, so yeah, if you think of me dieting or just like the the Hebrews, like um, they they knew the ending, they knew the goal that they were trying to get to, so they they remembered the reason why they were doing everything that they were doing, right? And so um, even though it wasn't, it's not the easiest thing to do, even even if there there could be a better way, or like if they felt like things could be easier, um, they continued doing it because they knew that this is what it takes to get to that goal. And so how can we apply this to like a bigger picture of our lives? Like um, we have to ask the question, like what's your ultimate goal? Uh, why do you basically work so hard to stay in school? Like why does your job matter so much to you? Um, why, do you why do you do what you do to survive? And what is the point? What keeps you going? What is that anchor for your soul? And where is your hope? Um, so I recommend that if you guys are like going through it as a Christian, like read the book of Hebrews. It's kind of, it's hard at first, but like if you read it, like if you're going through it, like read Hebrews, this is good. Anyways, so for um, tonight, um, the whole title is like 13 reasons why you need Jesus is because he gives you hope. Right, why you need Jesus? Because he gives you hope. All right, um, so the author of Hebrews, he writes to two different types of Christians or kinds of Christians. This is like one, like the, basically like the, the two main ones. Um, and the first type of person that he was writing to um, was basically saying that these are people that have been following Jesus and they, they were like all in at first. And so they hate, um, but in that, like I explained earlier, they were getting persecuted. They lost, probably lost their jobs. They lost their families. They lost every opportunity because they followed Jesus. And so like, they were just like, oh my goodness, this is like way too hard to follow Jesus. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. Like things haven't gotten better. Like they've, had, in fact, they've gotten worse. And so I don't want to do this. I'm like, so this close to giving up. And so we have this, that was the first type of Christian. The second type of Christian, um, I would say is like the half foot in, what is it? Uh, like half foot in the world, half, I don't know, what, half foot in, half foot out, I don't know what that term is. Basically, um, these are the people who are just like, you know what, I love Jesus, um, like, and I want to follow him, but I'm also really comfortable with where I'm at right now. Like my life is like pretty good. So instead of making Jesus my whole life, I'm just going to add him to my life and what's happening. So that's that kind of Christian that he was talking to. Two types. And I personally, I fall under both. Sometimes, like, my walk isn't great, and I personally, I've been both. So, yeah. So, that's where the author of Hebrews comes in. And he talks to these two types of people, and he's just like, I need to encourage you guys, because, like, there's so much more to what you're, there's purpose in what you're going through. There's a reason why you're doing this. And let me remind you of why you're doing this, and why you chose this path in the first place. So, since there's two different types of people, he had two different types of answers. Um, and he emphasizes it throughout the book of Hebrews. And one is don't give up on Jesus. I know it's hard right now. I know it's hard, but like, don't give up on him. And that's what he was emphasizing at first, for the first point. And the second point is that Jesus is enough. Okay, you don't need to add anything to him. You don't need to subtract anything to him. If you want to make him your whole life, he's enough, more than enough for you. So those are the two things that he was emphasizing throughout the whole book of Hebrews. And so um, if you guys look back at the verse... Um, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Um, so if you guys can just help me out, what does an anchor do? Yes. Holds the ship down? It's a weight to keep something in one place. Yep, a weight to keep something in one place. Hmm? Oh, your earrings. Oh, cool. You have anchor earrings? Oh, sweet. How appropriate. God is good. Okay. Um, so yeah, so basically an anchor, it prevents a boat from sinking, right? It prevents a ship from tipping, um, and it prevents a ship from drifting. 
So the writer of Hebrews is, this is so intentional because like, I know this is kind of like cute to us today, but it was so intentional for them at that time because they use a lot of boats. Like there's a lot of fishermen out there. So this is something that they were so familiar with. And so, um, yeah, so the writer, writer of Hebrews is saying that there is an anchor for your soul, that everything that is with, within you, when you're experiencing like turmoil, when you feel like you're about to sink, when you feel like you want to drift, like there's something that's going to hold you down if you let it, okay? <laughs> So um, when our souls are subject to drift or like subject to give up, to sink, we need to anchor it onto something and we need to place our hope into something, right? So when things get hard, like do you have an anchor for your soul? And I want you guys to like reflect and like ask yourself this question. Do you have an anchor for your soul? And if you do, what is it? Um, so uh, these are the two types of things that even I, I myself find myself putting my hope in. Um, but for some of us, including myself, I find that I tend to put my hope into my success, right? Um, so grades, like when I was in school, I was just like, oh my gosh, if, okay, if I have better grades, then um, my life would be better. Or if like, I'm, I'm cool because I have good grades and my parents won't be on my, my butt or whatever, like they won't hassle me. Um, I'm, I'm secure, I'll be secure once I get money. Or if I have more of this, then I'll be, I'll be good. So that's my hope is in money. Uh, maybe your job like it's like oh I'm set because I have this job like I don't have to worry about anything like um, I'm taken care of if you have a title at work or like a if you're a leader you're like oh yeah I have the rings I can call the shots like I'm good I'm set this is where I put my hope in or if you have like your degree like okay once I graduate once I get this degree I'm gonna be alright for the rest of my life I'm secure like no nothing can happen after that so it's not a bad thing to work against the, uh, work towards these things, you guys, because like, I actually encourage that. I hope you guys go to school. I hope you guys find jobs. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we should well work towards these things because like, we, it's good to have a practical lifestyle and to, to have, have security. Um, but we have to think about our soul again. We have to think about our soul. It's like if we are being completely honest with ourselves and we think about these things that we anchor our hope in, is this going to satisfy your soul? And I'm talking about, like we said, it's everything that is within you. Does it satisfy like your mental state? Does it satisfy your health? Does it satisfy your emotions? Does it satisfy your, all that stuff? You have to think about everything. Um, this might, they might like satisfy a part of your soul, but not everything. And um, here's the reason why putting your hope in these successes or just these things falls flat. It's because, um, we we kind of expect something that doesn't have a soul to anchor our soul wow. so that doesn't make sense right so um money ultimately it doesn't know how you're feeling your grades will never ask you how you're doing uh, your job can't like wrap its arms around you and be like i'm gonna be with you forever because one day they might replace you um your degree can't hug you when you cry and so we have to think about ourselves and we have to say um it's not a bad thing that you hope for these things but overall like our hope has to be so much greater and beyond this, amen? So, um, so that's kind of checks off the list, so like we can't do that, okay. Um, so um, what about this? So, so since you cannot anchor your soul in like things, what about we anchor it in like relationships? Um, so what about people? Like, okay, I have my, as long as I have my family, they're good, my family's my rock, like um, they got my back all the time, like forever and ever friends, you know what I mean? Um, or like maybe have like a boyfriend, girlfriend, like as long as I have them, they're good. Like they, they are my, my, my foundation, they're my rock. Like as long as I, has, I, have, as I have them in my life, we're good. Oh, my best friends, they're, they're everything to me. I'll do anything for them and like they'll do anything for me, all that stuff. And so like um, we look all, at all this stuff, like you hope if you, you think that like if you get married, you're gonna like be happier and all that stuff. Um, so, <laughs> oh, no, don't say that, that's good. <laughs> all right. Um, and we look at, they have souls, right? So they know how we feel sometimes. Um, um, and like my, my family asks me how I'm doing. My friends, like they check up on me. Um, boyfriend, girlfriend hugs me. My friends ask me if I'm all right. Um, but I have to ask a question, like um, tangent question kind of, not really, but how many of you guys believe like your lives are perfect? I'm not raising my hand because it's not. How many of you guys believe that your life is perfect? Like nothing's wrong, like everything's cool. Like none of us, okay? I'm a person. Yes. <laughs> so how many of you guys feel like your lives need like a little bit of fixing, even if it's a little bit, or maybe a lot of fixing? Hands up. 
I see basically everyone's hands up, right? Me too. Like, it needs a lot of fixing. Okay? Um, and being also completely honest with yourselves, like, how many of you guys can literally be there for your friends and your family 24-7 of every day? 24-7, every single minute. Like, even, like, let's say you're caught in the shower and your friend calls you and, like, you're like, oh my gosh, maybe you're in class. So we, realistically, we can't be there for our friends 24-7, right? Like, every, every single moment. So, I feel like I'm talking too fast. Okay, slow down, guys. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, my sister raised her hand, so this is kind of an example. Um, so she said, you need a little fixing in your life? Yeah, you're not perfect, all right. Um, and I know this is gonna sound super corny and half corny, but like my sister is like my closest thing to my anchor. Um, but here's the thing, like she raised her hand, so which means that she's imperfect and she needs fixing. And she's broken too, and like, so if she's my anchor, which leads me to my next point is like, how can we expect something that's partial, that can't be present all the time and broken to be our anchor? You know, um, if you think about it this way, like if you're, you have like a relationship with, or like you're with friends with someone and you both need the same kind of hope and you guys feel like you're going to get the same kind of hope. So that's just going to go very empty because you both need something from each other that you don't have and you're never going to have. And so that's kind of, that's hard, right? So we can't place our trust in people, not, not trust, but hope in people. Um, and I'm not saying like you should like not have any friends and like, um, stuff because we, we need community, we need all that stuff, but we can't rely on them to be our hope. We can't rely on them to be our anchor because they're imperfect, just like we are. We need the same amount of help that need, they need. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna calculate this. Like, So we can't count our, on our successes to anchor us because we need something with a soul. But we have people, they do have souls, but they're broken too. And so um, we need, so, uh, sorry. So we can't do that, we can't count on people, we can't count on our successes, so we need an anchor that's, that can identify with us, right? We need something like us to come down and anchor us. Um, we need something that knows how we feel, that can sympathize with us. Um, we, know, we need something that knows what we go through and we need an anchor that is always present and always willing to help us, amen? But here's the thing, like our anchor, it has to be perfect. Um, it has to have no flaws, it has to be with, without brokenness, and we need something that needs nothing from us in return. Amen? Um, because imagine having an anchor that always kind of tugs down at you, just like, hey, I need something from you, can you come down here? Like, no, we need something that can anchor us that doesn't need anything from us, but is so willing to help us and hold us down. Okay, um, so where the heck in the world do we find that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, and that's, that's the big question, is like, where do we place our hope and stuff? Um, and, um, Franny, you can come up and underscore for me, make me sound nice. Um, but yeah, so just to kind of wrap this up and have the point. Um, so throughout my walk with Christ, throughout my whole walk, like if anything, throughout my life, like I realized that there are so many different kinds of people that follow Jesus or just, um, yeah, follow him. And um, maybe you kind of fall under this end of the spectrum where you're someone like me who was like living in the dark for a really long time and like super wayward, such a mess. Um, you kind of you kind of fail at everything you try to do and like you kind of feel like you got the short end of the stick. And so um, like nothing is really, feels like it's going right for you, but you're kind of on this end. Or maybe you're on this end of the spectrum where you know you you actually have like a really blessed and good life like um you have you you have everything that you kind of need and like you're very privileged you're like and you actually work hard to be a good person and you actually are a good person um and you you, you seldom make mistakes um but like you kind of just still feel that emptiness inside um even though you have all these things like you you feel like okay i still i still feel like i need something i still feel like um you know I, i'm missing something and then maybe you're like in the middle of the spectrum right here where you're like okay, um, I'm not like a great person, I don't have everything, but I'm not like a saint either. Um, like I, I, I try to be a good person, like everyone kind of goes to me for help. Um, like, but at, this, at the end of the day, like, even though people come to me for help, like I, I don't have anyone else to go to because I feel like, you know, I can't relate. Um, so whatever end of the spectrum you fall under, um, and if you're, you fall under any of those and if you're still searching for like that hope tanker you're yourself in like let me tell you something like i never knew how much i actually needed jesus in my life until like everything i placed my hope in failed um 
um, like with everything, like my my career, like friends, family, relationships, like um, if you've ever been there, it's like a very broken place to be when you've, you've tried everything and it's failed, right? Um, but in that, you kind of realize how broken the world really is, amen? And um, you're like, okay, none of this is ever gonna fill the space in my heart and I need help. Like, what hope do I have and where do I go? And so we are gonna read back the, um, the verse Hebrews 6, 19, the whole verse. Um, it says that we have this sure and steadfast anchor for the soul. A hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as the forerunner on our behalf, having become the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so basically what this verse is talking about is that Jesus is the one who fulfilled every prophecy for these people and for us. Um, he, he fulfilled every hope that these Jews had expecting for a savior. Um, he has, um, and it says that he has gone as a forerunner, meaning that he went before us, um, meaning that he willingly did everything that we needed to do in order, um, and he didn't need to do any of that with our help. Like he did it on his own and willingly did it. I mean, and what what did Jesus do? Like he took our place, like that's insane. Like um, if you think back in the Jewish tradition and what these Jews had to do prior Jesus, like um, they had to, do sacrifices like every single day they had to go to the temple if you sinned if you just like told a little white lie you had to go to the temple you had to go get a perfect sacrifice they had to slaughter and you had to go through this whole ritual thing and so for them that was their life like they had to worry every single day whether or not jesus forgave them or like a god forgave them and they had to go through that every single day and so what jesus did for them and for us is like we don't have to worry about whether god forgives us because he does because he gave us his son right and so now knowing that we don't have to worry about that stuff like we only have to worry about living the full life that god had intended for us in the first place amen and so um i lost my place but um so this is this is the hope that these um new believers were holding on to and so if this is you this is something that you can have for yourself as well um, and I want to apply this um, to our lives and um, basically, like I said in the beginning, like how many of you guys know what you want to do for the rest of your life? I don't know about you, but for me, like I just want to glorify God in everything I do. And I, I, I know that's a lot of what all of us want to do, amen? And when it comes to our lives, I feel like we're just kind of asking the wrong question. Um, it's not that we're hoping to have it all figured out, but it's really hoping for something good to come out of whatever we choose to do, right? Um, but here's what I can tell you. Whatever you choose to do, like, do it for Jesus. Like, and it will never go void. Like, do it for God. Um, and here's the honest truth. And, like, I can be corrected. God can correct me. But, like, I think he can really care less about what you choose to do, what career we end up to do, what, who, what friends we hang out with, or, like, who we choose to marry. Like, he can care less as long as you don't leave him out of the process of deciding. Because you, as long as you pray about it, you talk to him about it, you'll know exactly what he wants for you. Um, and he just really wants to be there with us through everything, right? Um, and also a few last points. But if we go back to the thought of an anchor, um, that sounds super like romantic and stuff like that. Like, oh Jesus, you're my anchor. Like, sounds so nice and comforting. But, um, but if you guys like realize what that ultimately is saying, um, do you know why sometimes it's so hard to accept Jesus as our anchor? It's because if you think about an anchor, it, it plants you in one space. And so sometimes following Jesus means that God is going to call you to stay right where you are, right? And that's that's so hard because, like, we kind of, we don't want an anchor Jesus. Like, we want, like, a helicopter Jesus, or we don't want, like, a jetpack Jesus. Like, we want him to just kind of pull us out of the situation, not leave us there, but we want him to pull us out. Like, when you guys, like, have anxieties, or if you guys are, like, in uncomfortable situations, you're like, God, can you please get me out of this? Or, um... If we have burdens, we want God to lift it off our shoulders. We're like, God, get your jet pack and please pick me up. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. Um, but, and it's funny because um, if you think about an anchor, you don't, you don't normally see it because it's like on the bottom of the ocean, right? And so when we get to those times when we have like those hard moments, like we feel like, okay, God, where are you? <laughs> like, um, why am I still here? Why am I in this place? And we kind of think like God left. And, he never left. It's just you don't see him, but he's the reason why you're still planted. He's the reason why you're still standing, and he's been there all along. Amen. And so, um, 
Sometimes he calls us to really stay where we are because it builds character and perseverance to help push you to that hope and like why you're still doing what you're doing and to just encourage you for that, right? Um, but it's it's so hard, I know, but remember what he what he was emphasizing in the book of Hebrews is like, don't give up on Jesus. Whatever you're doing, if you're doing it for him, it's not going to go void. You have a promise to hold on to and like a hope. Um, and um, also anchors are so intentional because um, we as humans also tend to drift. And it's not during the bad times, it's normally towards the good times because we kind of forget him um, when we like are, like are fine, you know? Um, so it's just like, okay, God, I'm good now. You can go, like, um, you know, I don't, I don't really need you right now as I want to, like, subtweet this person or, like, I don't really need you while I want to go to the club or, like, I don't really need you right now while I'm hanging out with these group of friends. Like, you can go now, right? And so, but Jesus is kind of, like, that, like, annoying pest person. He's just like, okay, like, you can, you can get off now, Jesus. Like, I don't, like, you're cool, you know what I mean? Like, oh, God. Okay, but um, that could have went really bad. But... <laughs> We kind of like don't want Jesus to be with us all the time because we want to kind of do what we want. But he's like, no, I'm right here. I'm anchored in you, and I'm not gonna let you drift because I love you. I did too much for you, and I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna let you waste your life like this, okay? And that's Jesus. <laughs> and so, what does this have to do with anything? Um, so, like I said, if you want to choose what you want to do for the rest of your life, I, I pray that you choose to glorify Jesus in everything you do. Um, and this doesn't mean like I'm telling you to quit your job. I'm not telling you to like drop out of school, become a missionary. Like if that's what you want to do though, do it. Like that's awesome because people need that in like third world countries. But anyways, um, yep. Um, but here's the thing. Like I think there's a misconception when it comes to God or when, when, when it comes to following Jesus, like people's lives get really boring. Um, you kind of feel like um, following Jesus and living, um, following Jesus is kind of like gonna like make you not a fun person anymore. Um, and I think that's why people don't like following Jesus, because, like, I don't know, but I think it's fun. Anyways, um, li- living your life for Jesus, it doesn't take away from your life. It really just adds meaning. Like, it adds meaning to what you're doing, and it adds purpose to what you're doing. Amen? Um, there's a verse in Colossians 3.17. It says, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, and we go down to verse 23 to 24 it says whatever you do work heartily as for the lord and not for men knowing that from the lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward you are serving the lord christ so guys like if you play a sport like do it for the lord if you if you sing give it to the lord if you write do it for the lord like if you draw if you want to go to the army if you want to be a nurse um if you want to like do whatever you want to do do it for the lord if you are in a relationship like honor god if you are um just for the sake of Christ, like love your family, um, all that stuff, just do everything unto the Lord. And um, I promise you, like, I promise you, like everything will fall into place for you. Um, and um, like I said, Jesus is totally enough. And the last verse I'm gonna be sharing is Matthew 6:33, um, one of my favorites. Um, it says, but seek him first, his kingdom and all his righteousness and all will be added unto you. Uh, so in everything you do guys, like. Like I said, do it for the Lord. Like, let that replay in your head, like, like a lot, okay? Um, and I promise that, like, everything will become, like, so much more meaningful to you. Um, it's like God is going to give you everything that you need. And don't get that misconstrued with everything that you want. He's not going to give you everything you want, but he needs everything you need to live the absolute fullness of the life that he's going to call you to do. Amen. Um, so that was my message. Um, let's close in prayer. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for just uh, being our anchor, Lord. Um, when we are prone to drift, Lord God, when we're so close to giving up, Lord God, when we go through um, just the every days of life, Lord God, and we, we kind of get to the point, it's like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Am I doing, like, what, what hope do I have left? What do I have to hold on to? And Lord, we are so thankful because we get to look to you and we have you as a sure and steadfast anchor, just like the, the verse said, Lord God right now i just pray for anyone lord god that's still searching for you lord god who find it hard to make you their anchor lord god but i just pray that you press into their heart right now lord god and i just pray um, that you um, let them experience your love and the grace lord god um, that you have to offer us father god Um, and i just pray that in whatever that we do we continue to glorify you through it all lord Um, i just want to pray for every anyone here tonight that's um just, just um 
figuring it out, Lord God. I pray that you bless them with clarity, Father God. I pray that you bless them with peace and understanding, Father God, and trust in you, Father. And I pray in the moments where we don't see you, Lord God, we realize that you are our anchor. We might not always see you or feel you, Lord God, but we know that you are there because your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. And we honor you so much, Lord God, with everything that we have. And we just give back the glory to you, Lord God. Thank you for your son for dying on the cross for us, Lord God, and taking our place and being the forerunner for us, Lord God. We thank you so much. And um, we just give you back all the glory and all the praise. Um, we pray all these things in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Thank you.